Question 1. Which is the best method of brushing technique preferred for the patient with orthodontic appliance? A. Stillman method. B. Base method. C. Charters method. Answer. C. Charters method. Question 2. Which of the incisions is not followed in periodontal flap surgeries? A. Internal bevel. B. Interdental. C. External bevel. D. Cravicular. Answer. C. External bevel. Question 3. Main aim of restoration of carious lesion in phase I therapy? A. To reduce microbial source. B. To restore form of tooth. C. To restore function of tooth. D. All of the above. Answer. A. To reduce microbial source. Question 4. What bacteria are associated with localized juvenile periodontitis? A. Actinobacillus actinomycetum comitans. B. Bacteroides frisithus, Iconella carotens, and Treponema denticola. C. B. Gingivalis. D. Fusospirochetal complex, fusiform bacteria and spirochetes. E. Fusobacterium nucleatum and Prevetella intermedia. Answer. A. Actinobacillus actinomycetum comitans. Question 5. In periodontal disease, loss of which of the following fiber bundles are primarily associated in preventing the progressive downward proliferation of the junctional epithelium into the periodontal ligament and alveolar bone? A. Alveolar gingival fiber. B. Circular fiber. C. Interradicular fiber. D. Transeptal fiber. Answer. D. Transeptal fiber. Question 6. During pocket elimination by reflecting flap the incision which removes pocket lining is? A. Second incisors, or, cravicular incision. B. Internal bevel or first incision. C. Third incision. D. All of the above. Answer. B. Internal bevel or first incision. Question 7. 60 years diabetic patient. Present clinically with periodontal attachment loss and diagnosed as having periodontitis. According to OP 1999 classification of periodontal diseases, the type of periodontitis in this case is A. Aggressive periodontitis. B. Chronic periodontitis modified by systemic condition. C. Periodontitis as a manifestation of systemic disease. Answer. C. Periodontitis as a manifestation of systemic disease. Question 8. In an adult patient with chronic adult periodontitis the most successful approach to treatment is A. Extreme initial treatment followed by reviews every year. B. Surgery. C. Initial periodontal therapy followed by maintenance therapy alone. Answer. C. Initial periodontal therapy followed by maintenance therapy alone. Question 9. Indication of gingivectomy is A. Adequate attached gingiva. B. Infrabony pockets. C. Edema of gingiva. D. Pocket depth below mucogingival junction. Answer. A. Adequate attached gingiva. Question 10. Which of the following does not come under phase 1 therapy? A. Restoration. B. Plaque control. C. Removable prosthodontic appliances. D. Root planning. Answer. C. Removable prosthodontic appliances. Question 11. Type of suture recommended for apical? A. Horizontal mattress suture. B. Continuous sling suture. C. Anchor suture. D. Figure 8 suture. Answer. C. Anchor suture. Question 12. In the presence of abundant plaque formation hyperplastic gingivitis can be associated with which of the following? A. Cyclosporin. B. Pregnancy. C. Phenidoin. D. Procardia. E. All of them. Answer. E. All of them. Question 13. The purpose of guided tissue regeneration is? A. Complete removal of all irritants. B. Prevention of epithelial migration. C. Elimination of junctional and pocket epithelium. D. Careful curatage of the pocket wall surface. Answer. B. Prevention of epithelial migration. Question 14. Success of a free gingival graft depends on A. Donor tissue being as thick as possible. B. Presence of blood clot on recipient bed site. C. Proper immobilization of graft at recipient site. D. All of the above. 
Answer, see proper immobilization of graft at recipient site. Question 15. Surgical lengthening is indicated when? A. Subgingival caries or fracture. B. Inadequate clinical crown length for retention. C. Unequal or unesthetic gingival height. D. All the above. Answer, D. All the above. Question 16. Procedures is indicated in early? A. Scaling and root planning. B. Gingival curatage. C. Flap surgery. D. Gingivectomy. Answer, B. Gingival curatage. Question 17. During pocket elimination by reflecting flap the incision which removes pocket lining is? A. Third incision. B. Second incisors, or, cravicular incision. C. Internal bevel or first incision. D. All of the above. Answer, C. Internal bevel or first incision. Question 18. Success of a free gingival graft depends on? A. Presence of blood clot on recipient bed site. B. Proper immobilization of graft at recipient site. C. Donor tissue being as thick as possible. D. All of the above. Answer, B. Proper immobilization of graft at recipient site. Question 19. Root commonly removed in maxillary first molar during hemisection or root section is? A. Mesiobuckle. B. Palatal. C. Distobuckle. D. None of the above. Answer, C. Distobuckle. Question 20. The primary etiologic factor in the development of furcation defect is? A. Root infection. B. Plaque. C. Calculus. D. Cemental caries. Answer, B. Plaque. Question 21. Adult patient present clinically with irregular thickness of buccal gingiva, a round diamond burr used to correct and establish a physiological gingival contour. The type of this procedure is slash R. A. Combined gingivoplasty and gingivectomy. B. Gingivoplasty. C. Gingivectomy. D. None of the above. Answer, B. Gingivoplasty. Question 22. Root planning is? A. Removal of material alba and stain from tooth surface. B. Removal of soft tissue wall and periodontal pocket. C. Removal of diseased cementum along with other root deposits. D. Removal of food debris from tooth surface. Answer, C. Removal of diseased cementum along with other root deposits. Question 23. The mental nerve can frequently be found? A. Too apically to ever be injured. B. Between the first and second premolar. C. In the incisor area. D. Close to the alveolar crest slash E. In the proximity of the molars. Answer, B between the first and second premolar. Question 24. Free gingival graft usually placed on? A. Directly on bone. B. Periosteum. C. Attached gingiva. D. Movable gingiva. Answer, B. Periosteum. Question 25. Commonly involved tooth with fricatan involvement is? A. Maxillary first permanent premolar. B. Mandibular first permanent molar. C. Maxillary first permanent molar. D. Mandibular first permanent premolar. Answer. B. Mandibular first permanent molar. Question 26. During soft tissue curatage the following occur? A. Removal of sulcular epithelium. B. Removal of granulomatous tissue. C. Removal of diseased connective tissue. D. Removal of diseased cement. Answer, C. Removal of diseased connective tissue. Question 27. Where should releasing incisions be placed? A. At the mid-aspect of the root. B. Over the mental foramen. C. In the middle of a papillae. D. Over roots. E. Always at the line angles. Answer, E. Always at the line angles. Question 28. Glickman classified frication involvement into four grades based on? A. Vertical measurement of attachment loss. B. Horizontal measurement of attachment loss. C. Both. D. None. Answer. B. Horizontal measurement of attachment loss. Question 29. Which area of the oral cavity has the least amount of attached gingiva? A. Buccal maxillary molar. 
B. Buccal maxillary premolar. C. Buccal mandibular premolar. D. Lower incisors. E. Buccal mandibule molar. Answer. C. Buccal mandibular premolar. Question 30. What is the basic principle of intraoral suturing? A. Even distribution. B. Not to the lingual. C. The more, the better. D. All of the above. E. None of the above. Answer. A. Even distribution. Question 31. In order to maintain proper biologic width after crown lengthening, crown preparation between the margin of the preparation and the crest of bone should be? A. 3 mm. B. 5 mm. C. 2 mm. D. 4 mm. Answer. A. 3 mm. Question 32. What kind of tissues should compose a full thickness flap? A. Epithelium, connective tissue. B. Connective tissue, and periosteum. C. Epithelium only. D. Periosteum only. E. Epithelium, connective tissue, and periosteum. Answer. E. Epithelium, connective tissue, and periosteum. Question 33. What pathway do nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, block? A. NSAIDs block the anaerobic bacteria slash B. NSAIDs block the both cyclooxygenase and anaerobic bacteria. C. NSAIDs block the cyclooxygenase metabolism of arachidonic acids. D. None of above. Answer. C. NSAIDs block the cyclooxygenase metabolism of arachidonic acids. Question 34. All are true of apically positioned flap except? A. Eliminates pockets. B. More commonly done on palatal side. C. Increases clinical crown length. D. Preserves the width of attached gingiva. Answer. B. More commonly done on palatal side. Question 35. Biobrain is a commercially available? A. Root matrix protein. B. Non-bone graft material. C. Biodegradable membrane. D. Bone graft material. Answer. C. Biodegradable membrane. Question 36. We need to consider which of the following in the treatment of refractory periodontal disease? A. Mechanical debridement. B. Surgery. C. Antibiotic. D. Systemic health. E. All of the above. Answer. E. All of the above. Question 37. Following root coverage surgery on a tooth, what is the suggested healing period before making the final impression for the final restoration? A. 4 weeks. B. 3 days. C. 1 week. D. 12 weeks. Answer. D. 12 weeks. Question 38. Which of the following about conventional gingivectomy is untrue? A. Heal by secondary intention. B. Provides accessibility to alveolar bone. C. Eliminate false pockets. D. Leads to decrease in width of attached gingiva. Answer. B. Provides accessibility to alveolar bone. Question 39. Frication involvement is measured by? A. Neighbors probe. B. CPN probe. C. Michigan O probe. D. Periodontal explorer. E. WHO probe. Answer. A. Neighbors probe. Question 40. We need to consider which of the following in the treatment of refractory periodontal disease? A. Systemic health. B. Mechanical debridement. C. Surgery. D. Antibiotic. E. All of the above. Answer. E. All of the above. Question 41. There are a number of ways to control bleeding at the donor site, which one is first indicate to apply? A. Collagen with or without stent. B. Pressure with a tea bag. C. Suturing. Tie off the bleeders. D. Pressure with a moistened gauze. E. Vasoconstriction. Epinephrine in the local anesthetic. Answer. D. Pressure with a moistened gauze. Question 42. Which of the following aspects does not have to be considered in post-surgical wound infection protocol? A. Antibiotics. B. Wait and see. C. Local cleaning and debridement. D. Oral disinfectants. E. Short-term recall. Answer. B. Wait and see. Question 43. 
The following most frequently forms a tooth tissue interface following flap surgery or curatage. A. Adhesion of collagen fibers. B. Long junction epithelium. C. Collagen fibers parallel to root surface. D. Scar formation. Answer. B. Long junction epithelium. Question 44. In an adult patient with chronic adult periodontitis the most successful approach to treatment is? A. Initial periodontal therapy followed by maintenance therapy alone. B. Surgery. C. Extreme initial treatment followed by reviews every year. Answer. A. Initial periodontal therapy followed by maintenance therapy alone. Question 45. The dentogingival restorative interface is average dimension extending from the free gingival to the redeveloped bone of A. 3 mm B. 4 mm C. 2 mm D. None of the above Answer. A. 3 mm Question 46. Average human biologic width is A. 1 mm B. Half a mm C. 3 mm. D. 2 mm. E. 4 mm. Answer. D. 2 mm. Question 47. Periodontal attachment loss detect clinically? A. When there is recession only. B. When there is radiographic alveolar bone loss. C. When there is recession and or true pocket. D. When there is true pocket only. Answer. C. When there is recession and or true pocket. Question 48. Which one of the following clinical findings has greatest effect on the type of incision to be given? A. Amount of attached gingiva. B. Probing depth. C. Freedom attachment. D. Depth of the vestibule. Answer. A. Amount of attached gingiva. Question 49. Which of the following is a mucogingival surgery? A. Free gingival graft. B. Gingivectomy. C. Gingivoplasty. D. Widman flap. Answer. A. Free gingival graft. Question 50. Modified Widman flap was first introduced by A. Widman in 1918. B. Newman in 1920. C. Ramfjord and Nicell in 1974. D. Ramfjord and Widman in 1974. E. Ramfjord and Newman in 1945. Answer, C. Ramfjord and Nicell in 1974. 